okay this is the second part in the series of isolation techniques we will start where we left off this is locus local oxidation of silicon this is the second isolation technique in this isolation technique the basic principle that you are using is if you want to isolate device 1 from device 2 you insert an insulator between them and this insulator is silicon dioxide oxide silicon dioxide so local oxidation of silicon refers to the oxidation of silicon between devices how is this carried about the first thing we do is take this silicon substrate the substrate as such is not shown here we take the baseline as the substrate on the substrate uh, grow a thin layer of pad oxide and it's called a pad oxide and this thin layer is called a pad oxide because it acts as a padding between silicon nitride and the silicon substrate on the pad oxide you deposit a layer of silicon nitride silicon nitride is deposited by the CVD process, chemical vapor deposition process. Silicon nitride uh, deposition is done because silicon nitride is used as or it acts as a mask for oxidation process. Or in other words, silicon nitride does not allow oxygen to pass through it. So it protects the layer beneath it from oxidation process. Remember, our isolation technique involves oxide so you want to protect some portions from oxidation and you want uh, to expose the remaining region so to protect it we use silicon nitride after optical lithography the expo some regions are exposed as you can see here okay now in the exposed regions we implant it with boron the purpose of implanting it with boron is to increase the doping of that region if you look carefully you can see that some portions are exposed and some portions are protected by the pad oxide and silicon nitride now the exposed regions are where we are going to insert the isolation material and the protected regions are where the devices are going to be fabricated the area where the devices are going to be fabricated or are fabricated are no, is known as active area okay now between active areas you do not want any current to flow you do not want any leakage in that direction we take one more step that is the implantation of boron when boron is implement, implanted into the semiconductor what happens is the effectively the p type substrate becomes more p that means the doping increases in that region when doping increases it becomes difficult it becomes difficult for current to flow from this active area to this active area what do i mean by that when you're increasing the doping doping here if there is a parasitic capacitor between the two active areas this is one active area and this is another active area if there is a parasitic capac parasitic mosfet in this region we are effectively increasing the doping and that means we are increasing the threshold voltage of that parasitic mosfet when you increase the threshold voltage of the parasitic MOSFET, it becomes difficult to turn on that parasitic MOSFET. And if it is difficult to turn on the parasitic MOSFET, it is as good as turned off. If it is turned off, it means that it is as good as not present there at all. So that would help us in the isolation motive. So we have active area. This is the isolation uh, region for isolation. And we have already implanted it with boron. The next step comes to the uh, crux of it, that is the core part of it. We have we have to grow a field oxide layer. Now, to grow the field oxide layer, we use the use process of oxidation, of course, and you allow it to grow for some time, which means you end up with a thick layer of oxide. This thick layer of oxide is referred to as field oxide. After that is done our isolation is isolation process is done and you can remove the protection here that is you strip off the nitride and the pad oxide this is the end of the process sequence we have discussed these process steps already now we can do this local oxidation of silicon or low cost in two ways one way is that when this is one active area and this is another active area in between that you can actually etch away a portion of the silicon that is half of the 
depth that you want it in. That means half of the thickness of the oxide that you are going to draw, grow, you will. So after a portion has been etched away, you can see in the second figure that the field oxide has been grown and that field oxide is also known as locus oxide. This is a closer look at the field oxide growth here. You see that this is a trenched etched away portion and this is a step by step in illustration of how the field oxide is being grown. You see that the field oxide is growing in thickness. As it is growing, you can see that there was a thin layer of oxide here between the silicon nitride and the silicon. The field oxide that you are growing here is extending or connecting with in the pad oxide that is already present here. As the field oxide grows in thickness, it connects with or extends into the pad oxide, pushing the silicon nitride up. You can see in the final figure that the shape of the silicon dioxide or the field oxide that is grown looks something like this. And it has pushed the silicon nitride up and encroached into the active region. This is a problem. And this problem if you is called a bird's beak. Why is it called a bird's beak? Look at the shape of the field oxide and look at the portion which it uh, portion in which it pushes into the pad oxide uh, pushes the silicon nitrate up it looks something like a bird and its beak that's why this problem is called a bird's beak you can define it as a characteristic bump on the surface followed by a gradually no narrowing oxide tail into the active area a closer look at this uh, shows you that it really does look like a bird's beak these steps we have already seen earlier. These are the pad oxide, the silicon nitride and the field oxide has been grown right now. And after the nitride has removed, this has been removed. This is what your field oxide looks like. This is the pad oxide here. Now what happens as a result of this problem? What is the problem associated with this bird's beak? One thing like I just mentioned earlier is that it reduces the active region. You see that it has encroached into the pink uh, region that was actually supposed to be the active region. So from here onwards it was supposed to be from here to here it was supposed to be the active region but the field oxide has encroached into that region. So our active region width reduces. Now in the first step we already saw that uh, we had infused it with some implants that means you have already doped that region with a uh, dopant material. Because of this it might even uh, it since the because of the bird's beak this implant will also encroach into the active region now we don't want to increase the threshold voltage of the mosfet fabricated in the active region we do not want to increase the threshold voltage of the mosfet that will be fabricated in the active region that is not what we want so if if the implants encroach into our active region threshold voltage of the MOSFET will increase and that is not desirable. That is another problem. Now, uh, as I tried to explain earlier, we have two types of locos. That is one is semi-resist and the other is fully resist. The first one is, the this is the exposed region. You are not doing anything to the exposed region. You are directly doing oxidation in that region. And you see that the field oxide is growing here and the thickness grows above the surface of um, above the surface of silicon. In a fully recessed locus, we etch away a portion of the silicon substrate. Now, how much do you etch away? How much thickness do you need for the field oxide? Half of that. You etch away half of the desired thickness of the field oxide. And after field oxide is grown, this is the end result. The level of the field oxide is almost the same as that of our silicon substrate. So, that is fully and semi recessed locus disadvantage of course it is the bird's beak effect and the fact that surface area is lost because of this bird's beak advantage is that the process flow is quite simple and straightforward and the oxide quality that you the quality of the oxide that you are growing will be high quality okay now the next method of isolation is trench isolation this is what we will see in the next video thank you